I don't know how much value I have in this universe, but I do know that I made a few people happier than they would have been without me. As long as I know that, I'm as rich as I ever need to be. Hey kid, what time is that? It's time to be fresh. So, back once again with another episode. This is a big 7 0, the big 70. He wanted a 69. I wanted a 69, like, it's not, not happening there. Eh? Not on the recording. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got returning guest, we've got Big Al. Um, it is Big Al, by the way. He hasn't just, like, that last guest that was on hadn't eaten Big Al. It's just he's lost a lot of words. I, that's a, that's a nice back the combo you've that, ever had. Is that lad, it is. It's <laughs> but yeah, um, how are you doing? Good, mate, good. Returning guest, and you're in January, I think we recorded yes. it under January. Episode 42. Episode 42, see. I only just because I looked at it on Spotify then, because <laughs> I'm downloading download Marco's episode to listen in the van tomorrow. So I'll be to Marco. It was a good episode, and, and to check it out, because if you haven't checked it out already, go and check it out. If I go and check out the other 69 episodes, because they're all fire, to be fair. Well, okay. 70% fire. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's somewhere I haven't really found my feet. Uh, oh, well. Uh, it's unbelievably hot today, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. So there is a fan on in the background. I think again, these want to live up on the mood as I'm driving up here and it's red hot, the aircon's on, right? And it's pumping out. I'd wife past an old lady with a hat and a scarf and gloves on. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just quite me, right? Uh, I live in the nicest place you can, like, Beverly Hills, isn't it? Oh, I, <laughs> um. I live in Beverly Hills of, of Cumbria and um, that's just say. I mean, I can't say I live at Flimby. Yeah. <laughs> That's like not the art, quite the art of the Gucci Cumbria. That. No, well, <laughs> what does they say in Scotland? You snow, snow your hair, snow your balls. <laughs> <laughs> but how are you doing since I've oh, seen you? Good. Right, we're, this is a music podcast, so we we will get on to lots of other things, mm-hmm. but we'll talk music to begin with. Um, you messaged me last week. Did you say you had a gig last week? What? No, it's um, next Saturday. I know you've it's this one. Saturday and next Saturday. So this this Saturday. <laughs> uh, well, that's something. It's the only the two I've had. It's, my, it's like that's me bookings for the whole year. Is Booth and fucking Salt Fest. Hey, hey. Um, so Booth's on uh, stats to well. This will have been. It'll be tomorrow, but it'll be last Friday for you lot. Yeah. And um, so it's Friday, Saturday at Copeland Athletic Stadium. If you went, tell us how amazing you were. Give it a big shout because Danny, it's the last one Danny's doing. If you seen me and I was sober, go you. Um, and then when this comes out, it'll be Friday night, and I'll be at Salt Fest. Then. Okay, okay, yeah, he's, he's well mm-hmm. planned, he's well planned. Right, we can talk about a couple of things because I've got a lot of different things running. Uh, mm-hmm. I did a couple of booths. Uh, oh, yeah, that was how I met you, eh? Yeah, I met you, I met you, that was, yeah, that was 20, oh man, 2014, 15? No, I met you uh, in 20, uh, 2014, I met your brother t- 20. Yeah. Because it was at the booth, we were playing in that little, we were playing that little ghetto blaster thing, weren't we? Yeah, the ghetto yeah, blaster yeah, tent yeah, thing was, was good. Yeah. yeah. Awesome, um, honestly, for this area, the booth mm-hmm. is a really it's the last one he's ever doing as well. Really good. Um, good brand. Good. Festival, yeah, they yeah. were doing festivals before every other person in the world yeah. were. So it was. It was. A, it was a, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. It was. It, that was our local festival for a while. Yeah, like it was awesome say. as well. Um, so. For those who don't know, it's Mighty Booth. It's um, the more indie and rock out there, mm-hmm. but they do have like DJ yeah. tents with yeah. uh, house and stuff like that. Yeah, there's well, there's bits of everything, isn't there? Mm-hmm. Um, I played my first one 2012, um, and that was down at the the rugby ground. Mm-hmm. It was. Did I you go there? I think so. I remember seeing you actually. I don't know if you. I think you were working. Were you working in Spoons at the time? 2012? No. No, not then. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. I might have done 2011, I apologise, maybe 2011 I did. Maybe 2011. Or oh, yeah. maybe I was 2012, I was walking into it. Anyways, I Anyways. remember coming in mm-hmm. and we, we went to Spoons beforehand. Um, and someone said, oh, it's Chris's brother. And I was like, you, you were rushing around, looking busy. Aye, always looking busy. Like, <laughs> it's like, it's like uh, end, isn't it? <laughs> and I didn't know it as a DJ or anything mm-hmm. then. Um, and then a couple of years later, got. I think. I, did you? Did we meet by you commenting on my on my trainers, or did I comment on your trainers? 
Was I not wearing Superman trainers? Was I wearing Batman trainers? Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> yes, did you have the suit, Batman ones and I had the Superman ones? Yeah. I think you still get them in Sports Direct, but they're still only like 20 quid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Class. Class. I've had honestly about four or five pairs of them. The thing is, you walk them off straight away. Oh, yeah. Fucking uh, like you do, because they're the not shit. all... Shit. <laughs> well, they are, but they've got Superman and Batman on them, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, I think one of us copied the other one's shoot, uh, trainers, and I uh, got chatted in that. And I remember mm. it was dead clear. Um, it was Chris Wilson was on uh, and he was doing this the he was being being a bit of a show off quite impressive when he was flicking between on the vinyl and he was uh, doing, he was he was chopping and stuff and yeah. I was like yeah he's good <laughs> and then he, he I think you turned to me and goes he's good him <laughs> and that was the first time I talked to you yeah it was right and then if I'm not wrong you I've got a quite good memory of stuff like this but I remember you playing Funky House probably Funky House probably yeah. and I was like he's alright him bit of a character <laughs> and uh, we've been friends since <laughs> Um, but yeah they were good good like little events and one thing I always feel I thought about um, the Mighty Booth was they always had like one or two really good headliners yeah. like like worthy to go and see if I wasn't DJ and I'd go mm -hmm. and see them like a, some sort of indie band or maybe like a 2000s nostalgic act I'm sure they had a couple of, of them on as well I think the first time I went to the booth one was Future Reds can you remember them? yeah yeah, yeah. That was, that was they've support I've seen them um with this support was it Oasis I think I've seen them at Newcastle or something like that that must have been a while back was it oh fuck ah you'd be like 2000 and, and summit yeah and then we lived we lived close by each other mm -hmm. and then over the years we've sort of like there's been just weird times we've crossed paths mm -hmm. uh Bought some vinyl off you. Uh, oh, some, um, what were they called? Some dinkies. dinkies. Yeah, Bought yeah. some dinkies. Do you know, uh, some, do you know some of Original else? dinkies as well, they're not the, the picture discs, the originals. Mm -hmm. Do you know some as well? Like, I honestly was contemplating the other day, like, looking through my tunes and that. Like, I've got a box at home at my house, and then there's like fucking six or seven crates, or maybe eight of my mum's, and I was thinking, I was going to fucking tell them. Really? I thought about it and our kid was like, don't give them to me. I said, no, because you'll just keep the cunt and I won't get anything from him. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, yeah. no, no, I will. He said, no, cause give them to me because then you'd be sick of them now. But then like, in about a year's time, he'd be gone, I wish I hadn't fucking sell me vinyl and I'll have them. Like, I know what your ADHD is like. You're like, I'm done with them, I'll sell uh, them. Make a <laughs> and then you'll, you'll get the book. I remember he messaged me um, a, a few years back and he was like, got the bug again you sent me a picture and it was like the, the, the tractor s4 yeah and then and then you sent me another picture and on the you had the deck set up <laughs> and i was like yeah obviously got the it bug does back. go in phases like that though like honestly like right now like these gigs are coming up and i'm telling i've turned my decks on about three times this year like hmm. and i and i went looking for new music i went looking for new house that like i could find and i could not find anything that i liked what new. sort of stuff are you so looking at? Just kind of like just house music generally. It doesn't need to be funky house. Just I'm just not finding anything that really turns me on that's new. So I, I like a lot of I've got loads of old stuff and loads of classics that I love. But so if anybody's got anything that's amazing, send us it. Just fucking flick me switch, send it to us. <laughs> and uh, I just I just I need like I need that like this that we yeah that we turn on. What was the last thing that you you got that you thought this is good? Or oh, Jet Boot Jack always. I I do your left big shout out to him. Uh, he is without a doubt possibly the we talked about I we spoke about him last time he really? makes he makes bootlegs and edits the way that I would if I could is it disco? yeah is it? yeah I've heard mm. his stuff yeah, yeah. so he gets like proper classic tunes that everyone mm. knows and just adds a vibe mm. and that's, that's and the nicest the way thing you can as well man he's not just like he's, he, he works as well in like um, he like writes for TV for the BBC and stuff like that as well the guy's a proper artist he's fucking cool as out like I'm gonna have to find him mm -hmm. online I didn't, I, I, like you mentioned last time, I didn't really, not that I didn't take it on board, but I didn't, um, I didn't think to go and check him out, but that's interesting that. When you got a Wembley anyway, was <laughs> We'll get into that, we'll get into that next weekend. I'm so excited about that. Next weekend. Right, this is my plan, as it stands, this is my plan, right. Friday, I've got a podcast here. Mm -hmm. um, chill out with the missus and my little lad for the weekend. Um... Saturday, I'm, I think I'm going to venture through to Solfest. And Sunday, we're going all in, baby. Mm -hmm. Wembley, yeah. 80,000 people. It's going to be insane. And just just, just, uh, just, uh, just to counter that, 
about two weeks ago, I was at um, Target. I was at Target wrestling at whatever to be called. Big shout out to Tony H. Tony was the man. He was fucking epic, like, yeah. and we were drunk as fuck on Star Prime, and it was unreal. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the best time ever, man. You sent me voice notes going. I think I'm getting back into wrestling. <laughs> this is a vinyl thing all over again. And then, and then last night you were sending me voice notes going. Woo! <laughs> I, was, oh, I was super drunk last night. Like, oh yeah, I've been off, I've been on holiday this week and. Uh, I'm back in tomorrow yeah. though, but um, oh, yeah. Yeah, like, these dogs doing the work. Oh no! Oh, I have to share, give a big shout out to Kizzy. Hi, Kizzy, you are the best thing in the world ever, and I love you so so very much. And that was not forced or made me to do that at all. <laughs> but yes, so we had we had a dog. We had a, 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 a like, we had a dog, and it's uh, from uh, a, a, a part of her family. <laughs> when it when it wants something, or it, it's a little cocker spaniel called Zelda. It's fucking beautiful, and I really yeah. want a dog at the moment, right? <laughs> so again this is probably like the vinyl thing I want yeah. a dog and then get sick of it but when a dog wants something, something or it needs something or like it just it's just generally happy with something it doesn't bark it goes woo <laughs> so I call it Ric Flair dog the Ric Flair woo <laughs> class um, but yeah so fuck me I've lost track uh, where were we at oh sorry yeah we're talking about the, the wrestling all in um, mm. I'm going next weekend shout Bon Lee as well Bon Lee's coming with me uh, got a little sidetrack story we will get back into the music mm. but what happened was I bought my tickets when they were um, pre-sale so you get them a little bit cheaper mm. and you get decent seats so I got we've got the floor tickets literally next to the ring That's it's not ringside yeah. it's one or two back uh, it's still to, close enough to feel the sweat yeah oh you definitely um, enough to be on the TV I reckon I reckon oh, I'll have a good anyways so what had happened is Got them 129 pounds each. I think that's really cheap for, right. for what it is. Yeah, what too it is, right it is, man. So, me and my missus checked um, Ticketmaster to see how much mm -hmm. the, the, the seats were going for now. Bear in mind, when I got them, they'd only, they only sold less than a thousand tickets. We were one of the first in, and there was big demand for them. The first day, they sold 65,000 tickets. Um, and from there, it just climbed up and up and up. It's now the biggest paid wrestling event ever worldwide. Right, there's been bigger attendances, so it, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a proper nerd when it comes to statistics, especially with <laughs> Dan Stadler. So, right, <laughs> stats are ready. In, in North Korea, in 1993, I believe, or 1994, there was a wrestling, biggest wrestling event ever to date, but it wasn't paid. So, like, it, there were, basically, the uh, King Jum Il forced all of his people to go to this big <laughs> festival because he was a fan of wrestling. Um, uh. And there was 250,000 people at this okay, arena, man. but they weren't paying customers, so technically it's not. There's been WrestleManias, um, but again, didn't sell 80,000 tickets. It sold, I believe, slightly less. I think the biggest attended one, 78,000, but then they give away tickets and mm -hmm. special deals and mm -hmm. stuff. This is an event in which 80,000 tickets have been sold and it's Wembley Arena and it's going to be fucking amazing. Mm. Anyways, oh, all, all these statistics I'm giving you is for a reason. I paid mm. £129 for these tickets. Mm -hmm. uh, I got two. I really should have got four when you find out what the story is. And I checked for um, checked on Ticketmaster and mine and Ben's ticket uh, is now selling for £5,100 each. So... That would have paid you... So that would have paid your car off your weekend and everything, man. <laughs> it would have, yeah, it would have been great. <laughs> Just being in, like, buying four and binning off two of them, man. It's not like at that price. Well, oh, there's man. another twist to the story. So we were around with mates the other day, and my missus obviously had a little rant saying, have you seen this? He's bought these tickets and he won't even let me sell them. Like, we, we could go on a couple of holidays for this. Like, <laughs> right, okay, but I really want to live this moment. This will be such a special moment for me. Like, <laughs> yeah. You don't care. You don't realise how much... I care about wrestling and this is going to be so good and I was obviously passionate and then she was like next bit she turned the phone around to her mates and like oh, look at this look at this I could just press sell right now and it could go, I, could go. Oh. I was like listen you'll be, you'll be staying in the studio you won't be kicked out of the house you're not staying in the house you're sleeping outside lads. that's what it'll be she'll be in the doghouse <laughs> just simply because like it's going to be class huh? it's going to be class it is it is if you had a real brain, mm -hmm. like everyone else in the world, yeah, you would, no, you, I would you be would, selling them, like. you would, no, but you would sell them and you'd make ten grand off two hundred quid. But that's a big return, that though, isn't it? It's like, a big, 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 big that's return. Like, that's I don't, I couldn't even work the math out on that. Like it's a big, big return. <coughs> um, but I love wrestling, so, <laughs> so yeah. So in your answer, yes, I am looking forward to going next Sunday. I cannot wait. It's going to set off from here about. 
five, six in the morning, pick Ben up from Burnley, mm -hmm. and then head down to London. I think it starts at half three. So half three, and then it's going to be a long show because it's a big, big match mm. card. I can't wait. Is it going to be on telly? Yeah, it's, it's on telly, yeah. Is um, it on telly on Sunday next week? Yeah, yeah, live. I'll finish, I'll be finished work by then. Oh, oh. So yeah, it's, there's another good thing. It's Soulfest, and I've agreed to work on the Sunday. <laughs> and another thing as well, it's... Uh, uh, we will go off the wrestling subject. I know a lot of the listeners don't like wrestling. <laughs> but uh, another thing as well is for, for any wrestling fan in the UK, this is good because you can you don't need to stay up until one o'clock in the morning to watch it. This is going to be an afternoon show and it's going to feel so alien. Yeah. It's yeah. class. But yeah, um, away from wrestling. <laughs> Mainly is on two nights now and it all used to be on a Sunday. Yeah. And now it's across two nights. Yeah. Which is weird. Which yeah. is probably just a way to make more money and tell more Well, the take, wherever it is now, um, I promise we'll go off wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Skip 40 seconds. Um, but basically, um, what they do now is they, they've got that much of uh, a draw with, with, with regards to money and the economy and stuff that countries throughout America bid for WrestleMania. So what they'll do is they'll say, we've, we've got this, this and this, and we can offer you this. So when WrestleMania weekend's on, they take over wherever they are, this full city. Class. So I went to Clash at the Castle last year mm -hmm. in Wales and Cardiff. And the, wherever you went in Cardiff, there was pictures of like the Undertaker, every, just everywhere, like in throughout the town. And they Class, took over the full, full, the full spot. They had a, a, a pop-up shop built in the middle of town. And it was mm -hmm. amazing. Mate, that's unreal, isn't it? Yeah. So, right, we will get off wrestling. Who's your favourite wrestler of all time? I had to ask you this. I'm Nature Boy. Nature Boy. Nature Boy all day. Woo. <laughs> that, that's exactly why. Yeah. Plus, like, if, you, if, you watch the, um, if you watch the documentary about him, there's two documentaries. There's there's the 30 on 30 ESPN one that's on Disney. Yeah. And there's one that was made by Hulu or whoever it is. That, that, it is Hulu, yeah. yeah. The first one uh, on the, the ESPN one that's on Disney Plus, oh, it's sublime. Uh, I've, I've never it seen it. Backs up just everything you understand about him, right? He lived the gimmick. Like, yeah. Properly lived the gimmick, right? right you know right. what I mean? He was a fucking wheeler dealing, kiss stealing, fucking uh, jet flying, fucking crocodile chew wearing son of a gun. And I fucking love them, like, right? <laughs> and they ask him, right? They ask him the guy, how many women do you, be, you think you bring me to get? Easily 10,000. And I'm like, I bet you that's fucking right as well. Right. Like. Well, that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> when, when you leave today, download this podcast. Uh, I'm plugging up a podcast, but it's called this, obviously This Past Weekend with Theo Vaughn. Mate, mate, he's, he's been on it. I know I've got it, I've got it downloaded right. to listen to. There's a story in that. I won't ruin it too much for you, but there's a thing in it right now. I was just like, wow. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, he says, like, he says, he get, wherever he goes in, in America, he says he'll go into some random town and they'll have some like old haggard bird come up to him saying, Remember me? And he'll go, No, it must be someone else. <laughs> 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 because wherever he goes throughout the years, oh, he says he's got an age range as well. He says some of them are my age and they look not great. Mm -hmm. He goes, he goes, he goes, look after these ladies who were 40 years old and I was doing them 20 years ago. <laughs> like, like, as an old fella. <laughs> Uh, he's, 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 a, he's a weird one like oh, he's, he's, a, he's a boy Hulster's just turned 70 as well eh? I fuck him we're not talking about him I don't like, like him oh, well, no, we're not allowed to talk about Hulkamania Women World I've got I've got, I'll show you my Hulk in inch there pythons. yeah die, uh, last time last time we were on <laughs> I, got, I got the, the thing. they're going up on that wall by the way right well, there. I've got I've got a couple of hundred so I don't know how I'm going to do it yet logistically you've like made yet no. no, we're not getting a Brad refresh. <laughs> you are getting a Brad refresh where you are. You are like she. She did I tell you that she said about getting like a family one? I was like, oh, I can probably get behind that. But I'm not getting a Brad refresh one. You are like talk about egotistical, mate, mate. <laughs> Just leave it with us. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't it, you? No, 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 no. Um, so, oh, you were talking about the booth. So, Solfest. We'll talk about um, Solfest. So we will be, and we being foreplay, which I am very loosely involved with because I am terrible at organisational things. Yeah. Uh, so there'll be so the four play will be four play are me and Chris and Phil Bridges, mm -hmm. uh, Darren Walker, everybody loves Alf, and uh, our Scott McClellan, House Queen's House, mm -hmm. and then Becky Kerr is our woman who is amazing and does everything. Big shout out to Bex. Yeah. Uh, but I just suck at like organising stuff and like me and like I've I've literally lost the passion for how I, I, I've lost how passionate I used to feel about gigs and that. And, I'm really hoping that like some inspiration hits me before it, like this weekend. Like, like I'll get you talking about music, don't worry. I know. Um, have you got like when you're there, you're right into it, into it when you're there. Mm, I don't know because the last time I played was Soulfest last year. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't gigged no anywhere gig. this year. No. Uh, 
This year's been a very transformative. All year. two gigs a year. <laughs> That's it, mate. Hey, hey, I'm like, hey, I'm like, I'm like, uh, it's like old school WWE. You only rock the big, you only rock out for the big events. You know what I mean? He's not having the most WWE yeah, yeah. in Glasgow when I was like six and there was fucking no one there. Uh, you know, there was hardly any fucker there. I think the Bushwhackers were there and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only come on for the big events. Yeah, that's eh? it, man. Well, it's not just that. The special like, attraction. This year's been a very transformative year. There's a lot of things changed. Do you want to go into it? Fucking right, aye. Go on, man. So there's a lot of good things changed. They, they diagnosed me with ADHD last year. They got, I started on the medication this year, which I didn't take today, just so it'd be extra fucking awesome. <laughs> and, um, and I met a wonderful lady who now lives with me. Oh, wow. I was in love. Oh, mate, like you've no idea. I would do literally I've, anything for this woman. I'm not even joking. Off your voice messages alone last night, I was like, yeah, he's in love. <laughs> mate, honestly, I, there's nothing I would not do for this woman. And I'll tell you all that. <laughs> not because she's making me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We haven't got like pay, uh, cards behind the screen, behind the camera. So. Talking about, man, she's back there with a shotgun. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <Hiya. laughs> No, I was joking. Um, I was, I did, I was giving her some stick last night when I was drunk. Like, she's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about you loads. You should you fucking better. <laughs> uh, you tell, you can tell the story of uh, what you, what you told your daughter, what you're doing today. Oh, so I a J, big shout out to Jamie, Jamie Mia Lockie. So what are you doing tomorrow night? I'm going to Brad's house to record a podcast. What's that? I'm just gonna talk for three hours. What about? But, about me and you guys are probably going to be talking rubbish, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, and here we are talking rubbish. Yeah, talking, talking shite wrestling, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's it, that's it. So, um, uh, one thing as well, before we, we change subjects again, because we're flying here, <laughs> um, is that last time you were on, we went over your story, but after talking to a couple of people, I know you've got loads more stories, because... <laughs> what kind of stories could you mean, man? Um, well... This isn't behind a paywall, so <laughs> so you just have to take it easy. No, no, it's just stories. Um, you were quite like because you obviously last last time you were on, you told us about oh you go to these events, these mm-hmm. events and whatnot, and then you didn't. I don't think you like actually like divulge fully into it. So mm-hmm. so there's a there's a couple of what well, what more did you get up to in your club and days like so what was what what, what were you mainly going to? Was it trance or hard house? Both, both. Hard House was probably a lot a bit later on than the trance. So the first ever gig I went to was Leeds Town Hall, ninety eight and nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. And for Gate Crash and that was class. Yeah, we touched on that. Yeah. Last time. Um, hello. <laughs> You're on the podcast. I can't help it, man. It's, it's caffeine. It just makes it. <laughs> that, that's what I do. Literally does that. Mm. But uh, I picked a lot of stuff like that. One of the like uh, stuff. One of the best ones I've been to was Gate Crash at the NEC. We've been there a few times. Yeah. I don't think they've been the NEC. It's a fucking big fuck off series of buildings, right? Yeah. And uh, man, we went to see. Uh, it was Gate Crasher was there, and there was obviously different rooms, different things going on. There was hard house rooms, all hosted by Tidy stuff like that. Seen Van Dyke play there for three hours. Fuck me, that was unreal. Like, uh, if you've never seen Paul Van Dyke, man, I, I never oh, have. Mate. Like. Mm. So my my thing is right with with this is that is that would you say that them them sort of times was your what you're captured in like everyone's got the golden era haven't they mm-hmm. would you i would s- say my golden era would be i would say 90 98 to 2006 maybe yeah right so what and and is that where you like pull inspiration from when you're playing mostly mm-hmm. most of your stuff i don't know i don't know if i can register that in a way that i could class as pulling as inspiration because my mind goes that fast with stuff that you know it's very fleeting and I think I've I genuinely think I've only ever seen you play three times two of them were for you I think weren't they uh, one of them was one of them was uh, and two have just been random other times mm-hmm. and whenever I've seen you play you always play well, well why do you say always but the times I've seen you you played Funky House from that sort of year say 2004 yeah. ish yeah. that is my golden time like. is that is oh, it? But there, is, there is a lot of good stuff like from the, the, the mid to late 90s as well um, one tune which um, I could never find anywhere right on mp3 and I had a vinyl rip of it but you it was terrible about it on last podcast, you said, it? Up. and you played it once that, was uh, it that one your friend bought you or something was it? I don't know oh. but, um, but but it's been re-released on another label and I bought it on Beatport the other day and it's fucking it's, it's on a wav and I'm just I'm so grateful for that <laughs> are you going to play Honestly. it so fast? yeah fucking hell I'm going to play it on fucking Saturday as well <laughs> playing it tea time on Saturday as well so it's like that's like the, I like that time at a festival because everybody's had a good few drinks yeah. got warmed up in that man just fucking getting and people all remember good. them ones ah, yeah, like, exactly like the head, you'll see especially with the booth the headliners tend to go on later mm. 
Um, and like everyone's too wrecked by the end. Mm. Like I, I would never want to close a room. Like, it's happened a few times, and it's not something I want. I want to play. I want to be playing. Uh, if it's a if it's a normal night in a club, right? Say club opens at nine, ten o'clock, something like that. Yeah. Latest I want to play is midnight or one right. o'clock because you just after that it kind of drops off a bit for me. Oh, do you know what I mean? I tell want me about it. You will I? I play. I play the last hour all the time. <laughs> yeah. I want to play peak time because people go like you know people always think that like peak time is is closed in the room. I don't think it is peak times when everyone's still there. You've, you've got yeah. people who only drink beer and people who do other party favors, and they're all still there at the same time. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a cro the crossover. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> the and then shortly after that, it drops off. It starts emptying out because it's getting late now. But that for me is like peak and optimum time. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. So I, I was worried, like, because I was saying that about what, what I was going to play, and, that, and I was like, oh, I've got some bloody new tunes or this happening. And I'm thinking, I'm sick of playing these tunes. I'm thinking, but nobody else is going to be sick of hearing you play them because you haven't played at all in the last fucking 12 months yeah, so you'll no. be fine Especially, you could do what Hulk Hogan does where he just turns up big boot leg drop I and do this big and all boot this, leg drop right there <laughs> yeah that's it right you could turn up bash the same set out oh mate that's so right you, I just want that on a t-shirt big boot leg drop out yeah. <laughs> all the big attraction alright alright but um yeah so do you know who I've I think I've seen the set times um, does it start like midday or something like that uh, on Saturday I think so and I need to be there at 12 because I'm stage managing oh right so look at this is oh hi it's grown up now no, what's going on <laughs> basically that means I've just got to be there to make sure four count and off at the right time yeah um, but so who's on and after, who's on that night that's on before and after you like what what are you taking over from what style <coughs> and what, what you keep passing over to well it'll all be house on Saturday um, I've no, I can't, I've, honestly, mate, for the life of me, I cannot remember. But I do know that I'm on R5 till 7, and then I think Vinyl, so it's someone else, and then it's Vinyl Man, and then I think it's Phil and Squizzer who are closing. Right. So that'll be good, like. Phil's just, for Phil Bridges, big shot to Phil, he's just had one of his first tunes signed to a label as I've well. I've seen like. that as well, that's, yeah. That's, that's really good. Phil, nice get your ass on here as well. Uh, I did reach out to him. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if he's gonna. I don't know if he has got the time or what. I don't know. Mm. Come on here, you can promote your new track. <laughs> right, come on, Phil. Come on, Phil. Come, yeah. come and speak. Yeah, I've seen that. He uh, put a little post online, didn't he? That he mm. got anything. Well, well into him. I actually I haven't heard the track. I don't even know if it's out yet, but I'll definitely give it a listen. Mm. I like a lot. I liked a lot of his uh, stuff that he was doing a few years ago. Like his mix, like, just his mixes. Like I don't know if, if mm. he's produced or not, but is I started deep diving when I heard of one of his mixes a few years back, where it was like really techy. Uh, yeah, uh, he went really uh, techy for a yeah. bit. I think it's. I think I'm not. Sure, I'm not even sure what kind of what style of track is. To be fair with you, do you know? I'm a terrible friend like that. Have you heard uh, it? No, no. no fuck. <laughs> um, I'm just joking for the man. He's putting work in and he's paying off. Do you know what I mean? Class. If you can't celebrate and so be much. grateful for your friends and the things that they have, then you are a terrible person. It's that simple. Yeah. Like. There's a lot of jealousy. Oh, you know, mate. Right. Um, I've, just, I've, I've, I've had little tiny conversations with you about it and. Just, I, I just boggles my mind. How could you be asked to like? Well, one thing I do like about what you as lot do, and it's quite admirable, when you do your, your four player DJs thing, and I like, it's like you're you're in it together. Although you, you like, you've just admitted there, you said I'm not motivated at the minute. They'll carry you, and then when someone else is not motivated, mm -hmm. you might be in the mood and carry them. And it's like not, not carry them, but mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Do you know you the right way to pick up works? on the energy for them? Don't yeah, you? yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just the thing that's bothering us is it's just. I really desperately want to find some new music that I like, but and this is again and this is again a proper ADHD thing. I'll be like, yep, go on up tonight, finish work, I'm gonna go and have a look at some tunes, get on, forgot the beat port, look at the first three tracks in the top one hundred or whatever genre I'm looking at. If I don't like them, the phone goes down. Stop looking. Yeah, you don't have the, the, the concentration. If that's, if that's the top three, do you know what I mean? Plus like tune chopping is it like tune chopping like and it's proper like and it's gonna sound old and crap and I don't give a fuck because I'm old and crap. <laughs> but like going to a shop and digging through records and that man and like pulling out white label and you've got no idea what's on it and then you find out it's abs something absolutely fucking sublime yeah and it's worth the 12 quid or whatever it is it was going to cost you do you know what I mean I still vinyl shop um big shout on Mrs who puts up with it because <laughs> and big, yeah, big shout to the, the delivery driver who's now they've got a stash I don't know I might see it on the, pod, on the pod but they've got a stash in my garden now <laughs> where, where they know where to put the vinyl if, if it looks like a 12 inch record they know where to put it <laughs> so, so it's weatherproofed class mate I like this but I, I, I still collect them and I'll be honest with you I haven't been on my decks like turntables for 
three years, maybe. Oh man, I think I was on mine last year. Um, yeah, I play the records and stuff. It's still, it, I only buy stuff now that I can't get digitally converted or sample stuff or whatever. Um, and I still get a couple of deliveries a week. Um, <laughs> and I'm still when I go when I go to. Manchester, mm-hmm. Liverpool, anywhere like that. I always find the record shops as well. You, t- they're harder to find nowadays. But for me, I was like the when when I was younger, looking in record shops, I caught the real back end of it. I, I actually caught a golden e- era, mm-hmm. so to say, because it was when everyone was f- selling them to record shops, all the collections. Uh, yeah. So I was getting all yeah, the good yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I did dirt cheap as well. Um, that's that's when I caught. Um, that's for me to get like when you go, I'm going to sell these yeah, exactly. because I'm going to sell them now. And then when you work out, you sold them 50 pence each and, uh, yeah, and then he's me getting a steal for like £2.50. That's the thing, like I've never been like on Discogs or out like that, but like I, I know I've got like a big shout to Millsy for my, was it my fucking 30th or something like that? My, no, it was my 25th, I think. Millsy gave me Vosprung Dyke Technique on vinyl, right? uh-huh. which is the only time and place that you will find that I've so far found the Paul Van Dyke mix of band refinery that's a full side of a vinyl because when it came out on Positiva it was the B side at the back yeah and like ah oh, it's just a fucking great album like. <laughs> really shout Millsy awesome. as well Millsy's yeah. going to come back on uh, he's, he's got a, I told you off pod but we're going to be I've uh, got a couple more chairs there we're going to do like a group conversation <laughs> and I think that'll be good crack can I come in release him yeah yeah, oh, yeah. Mate, that'll be unreal yeah big yeah. shout out to Millsy I do love Mills uh, I haven't asked him yet but um I know, I know somebody who's passionate, you obviously know me, Chop, obviously. Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask Chop to come on as well, because <laughs> I think... Uh, yes, the, the big, oh, mate, I mean? get me in for that, eh? get yeah. me in for that, please. Mate. I want to do like a little... They haven't even, I haven't even asked them, a, well, Millsy knows about it, but I haven't even asked these people yet, and i seen I seen Chop at work, and I thought, you know what, that'd be a fucking good episode, that. Okay. <laughs> um, oh. Although some people might not know who he is, or, or very little will, I think it'll be... Yes. Oh yeah. mate, that yeah, because especially for the the specific thing that we've, you you spoke about, how you want it to run, yeah. But it's just a conversation. It's just a long form conversation. Put some beers. Yeah. <laughs> All characters, there, oh, right, absolutely, yeah. mate. Yeah, um, unreal, man. Class. Um, I'm giving my plans away live on pod. Fucking hell. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just bleep that bit out. <laughs> I'll tell you now. Wait, see, I bet you there's somebody else who does it before me because there's loads of. Oh, another thing. Um, this isn't a negative thing. I've got a question to ask you in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, thought, I'm just, I thought my thought process is kicking in. Um, I've seen in the last three months lots of podcasts popping up and I've seen them myself and I've gotten a lot of the passionate fans messaging me of the pod saying, look at this, they're, they're copying you, they're copying you. Right, I just want to address it actually on, on here. I am all for it because... Although there will be people who's doing it, I think mine's different to everyone else's in a way which is different, as in it's much more chilled out or mm-hmm. whatnot. And and to be honest, we, we talk shit like we said. Like mm-hmm. even his daughter said, you said just gonna go and talk rubbish for like a couple hours. That's all we do. Um, I've, been, I've had people jumping in my inbox saying, um, "Oh, look at this person, they're copying of what you're doing," and because your formula works and stuff, I'm like maybe they are maybe they're not I don't know more than likely they're not they've just said they enjoy podcasting like I did um, but I'm all for it because guess what I can link up with these people and I can do I'll go on their podcast they come on my podcast exactly. and do you know what I mean and it makes a bigger community yep. like I, I know we're nowhere near even that level but Joe Rogan like and Joe Rogan yep. got the likes of Theo Vaughn the yeah, likes yeah. of like uh, Bill Burr uh, and all like, like people are, my favorite he's, he's good people in the but world. It, it elevated his podcast to, yeah. to a new level mm-hmm. and it's like I'm all for it if people want to sit here and talk shit about music it gives me something to listen to because yeah, I don't yeah, like yeah. them sounding my own voice <laughs> so when I'm interviewing people I'm like oh I don't know. yeah but um, yes I'm all for it so for podcasts big shout out to um, thing as well uh, Jay Viper uh Culture 303, he's on In Demand Radio as well, he's been getting some top guests on and he, he's same. He's in the same similar industry to me, he does hardcore but, mm. um, and he's had some top guests on, so go and check their podcast out as well, I think that's really good. Excellent man. Um, and there is a couple of others, uh, Felix Leiter's podcast, um, he does, uh, he's done... Oh, I forgot. I feel so bad now. Sorry, loose cast. It's called. Uh, yes, it is. I remember gonna, now. Gonna plug it. Um, they've they've only been going a couple of weeks and stuff, but it, they've, they've put on a good presentation. It looks the it looks the part. 
and they're getting some top guests on as well. Me, my first foray into promotion was with Ben. Was it? Uh, yeah, we used to, we'd run a night called Soda out the back room of Houston. Right, so what and time still, was that? I was pro- proper funky handbag kind of style house. I've still got the fucking one of the signs. Uh, and what was it made. called? It was called Soda. Soda? Yep. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome, man. It was all there. Uh, it was all it was all just black and white, the logo and stuff, man. And uh, I've, 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 got a, I've got a box with some flyers in as well. Getting this out, I'll post it on the in the group page. Mm. And then we'll get it, we can have a look. Oh, right. and, uh, and then shortly after that, because of the success of that, me and Ben Bogue, shout out to Bogue, we spoke about 155 last time. Right? Yeah. <laughs> the 155 logo was just a 1, a 5, and a 5, and a thing that I made on Microsoft Paint. <laughs> <laughs> in like 2003. Bogue is coming on, by the way. Yeah. Um, yeah it, uh, we've, got, we've, we've talked about it. I think a lot of people from Cymru will enjoy his episode. Yeah. Um, Bogues a fucking legend, like. Yeah, and <laughs> once you get him talking as well, I think yeah. he'll be a good crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, I did say I had a question for you. Um, mm-hmm. I've, I've gone a, a long way around this, but um, it's only because it's a nag that's been getting me when people's been messaging about the other podcasts. I support it fully. But my question to you is, what? what is, I've said this to everyone as well who's coming on now, it's a new mm-hmm. sort of mm-hmm. thing I've got going. What is it for you that's a bit of a, um, uh, what would you say, pet peeve? What about the industry? What industry? Music or? Music, yeah. So, so, for instance, I've gave mine on a couple of episodes ago. Mine was, a pet peeve is, for instance, um, Mar- Marco said booking agents, dealing with booking agents when he's promoting. Mm. He, he absolutely despises that. Um, mine was a positive that turned to a negative. I've got, like, my, my happy place is when you turn up and there's a working monitor and mixer that, that's usable. Aye. <laughs> like yeah. so, do you go on going? Oh, mate. So if I'm putting you in in, in the, on the spot now, no, what's no, no. A, what's a pet peeve of yours as a, as a DJ or as been involved in this industry? So only from my early days of promotion, it wasn't a pet peeve as such. Some couple of my friends who had all, um, so whenever we put a night on, I would try and get as many of my mates on as I could. Um, so a couple of them rocked up, who shall remain nameless, but they probably know who they are for watching this. Right. And we were running a trance night in the Miriam Fusion, and uh, I was putting my mates on. They were playing Prong House in the back room. Right. It's like, right, so you're in this room, mate. Here's your mixer. Keep it to 11 and 11 and 11. You know, don't blow the so you'll blow the, they'll blow the amp and that. Yeah. But I like it at 12. I said, you're not in your fucking bedroom now, son. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, you know you know what I mean? When you're sitting at 12 with your, with your gains and everything. Yeah. So, just had to keep them at a particular level because we'd blown out that amp in that little back room of Fusion many, many, many times. Right? Yeah. So, it wasn't a peeve as such. It's just, you know, you, those are things that you need to learn to roll with when you, when you start doing it commercially do you know what I mean yeah like that's like you said then if you can rock up and stuff works it's magic but I've played in some fucking shit holes with you. there's no fucking there's no toggles on the mixers or yeah. you know what I mean it's just the wee metal bit on your on your, on your <laughs> yeah. theater, that, eh? or, or, a, or a mixer that is totally like foreign to you you just oh, have I, no idea what it is oh, it's I, like I, what, I, how am I going to play I, with this yeah, and yeah. that's something that, like I, I still can't figure out right rotary mixers right rotary mixers I have no idea how the fuck to work because there's no faders it's all just knobs yeah, it's. It, I think it's harder to gauge the volume on it. Mm. I think I, uh, I've only ever played on once. I don't think I've ever played on one of them. Once. I think they've, they've died out, haven't they? Uh, you'll, there'll, there'll be a group somewhere on Facebook of people who are like absolutely like over the moon and in love with these things so bad eh? and I they'll probably like there'll probably be some sort of outcry and outrage for me talking shit about them. <laughs> <laughs> I played on a Rotary and it was a. Uh, was it a Technics? Rotary one it was really old Ooh. and it was in I believe it was in Fleetwood on Morecambe um, oh, and I turned up and honestly they had like to be fair to them they had like the CDJ the the paint at the time the top spec ones were the 1000s mm-hmm. and they had the 1000s and that there so I was happy with that and whatnot. but this mixer I just I couldn't get away with it and to be fair I was just like I looked and I was just like wow <laughs> this is uh, what the fuck is me yeah well <laughs> to be honest with you because they had on the rotary, they had like a, cr- a cross fader as a, as a, as a, as a, as on a knob, and I was like, right, okay. And then I was like, where's the volume down these? And then obviously you see there was people are mixing, and it's just like, this doesn't what work for me. Nah, yeah. not at all. And like. as well, they did, and if I'm not mistaken, there wasn't like a, obviously you've got your, your highs, mids, and low. Mm-hmm. I don't think they had highs on it, they just had gain mids and low. Mm-hmm. And it was like, it was a strange one. I can't remember what. What you had done, eh? What, um, what it was, but it was shit, and I'm glad it. Did. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad there's an industry standard now. Ah, really? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. So, so what? What would be your sort of pet peeve? I'm not letting you have the. the I don't know. Like, one. I, I don't. I wouldn't say I've got one really. Like, you about to have one. It's about to be something. Just 
Mm. Was it, would it be the unmotivated thing, would you say? Well, no, because that's... I wouldn't really say that to people about the industry. That's just my own shortcomings. Yeah, no, but... Mm. I'll tell you what I'll tell you what does piss me off, eh? Right, I'll tell what? you what really pisses me off. And it happened at Mile Castle, and I shall uh, not name the people who it were, but so when you get to a gig and you've got a free bar because you're playing, because yeah. you're not taking money for the gig, you're just yeah. getting paid in beer. But you realise that one of your friends who's been there from the afternoon has been going to the bar with him and his fucking four mates and drank the fucking spot dry and it's fuck all left when you get there. Ah, right. Was this the one at Carlisle? I'm sure I don't know what to what you yeah, it was that it was Mile Castle. Mile Castle at Carlisle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I actually don't know the story behind this, it's just when you said the Carlisle Castle. Is it the was it raining? Is it, is that I think no, no, was it fucking it was Saturday. Well, I was only there on the Saturday. <laughs> I can remember I can remember just seeing pictures and it was I thought it was raining. I can remember as well that I'd uh, I'd set off like to work, I was working in the tax office and I was on a half day Saturday and <laughs> I'd fucking sat up the night before and sorted all my tunes and that on the USB. Gone to work, got to work and realised I'd left the fucking USB room, so I had to drive all the way back to Big Rig and all the way to Carlisle. Great. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> hey, I've done that. Hey, right. I've Is also it... learned since that point as well that I tech two. Yeah. And, and sometimes I'll be backed up on a memory card as well. When we leave here, I'll show you I'll show you what my DJ bag looks like. <laughs> Mine is <laughs> disgusting. Um I've got literally, I mean, big shout <laughs> big shout to John G as well. I was in Carlisle and we were playing in um what was uh, what's it called? House of Vodka, do you know that one? Uh, it's on. It's called Below now, but I don't mm. know what it was called back then. Um, it, oh, you go underneath, anyways, underneath. And, oh, I did. What, what, it's on Botchergate, Nick, just well, up front. No idea, then. O- opposite the Border Rambler. Mm. But anyways, you, you go down underneath, and it's proper like underground venue, really, really good venue. I like it. It's a bit. I got lost in the first time I went in because it's like corridors. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyways, I was. To get into the DJ booth, it's like uh, arched over brick wall, and obviously me being a bit tall, I fuck, it, I banged my head, and dropped my bag on the floor. But I'm a, it opened, and my USBs just went everywhere. I've got a bag of USBs because I've, I've got, I've got, I've got what, what is basically the fear of. Do you know when you plug USB on and it's gonna go? Uh-uh. Yeah, it just goes no. Like the, uh-uh. I plugged, well, I plugged one in the other week uh, when I was playing at Sank, and it was on the new three thousands. But I don't use record box or no. like that. So I just copy and paste onto it and plugged it in. It was like nothing on it, and I was like, "Shit, fuck!" Right. So then I went to went through things. And I just had to pull out what I could play on my others. Luckily, I had a, a, an exact replica of the one I was wanting to use, and I had uh, all my bits on there. But that's a pet peeve when you turn mm. up and it says it says there's no music on you. Think. Yeah, I would take that as well. I need to notice one as well. It's like since it's got since it's got easier to go to a gig, right? Because going to a gig in the day was like a fucking Mission record box man, record boxes are heavy as fuck. Do you know what I mean? Even if it's only a little skinny one, it's still heavier than carrying two USBs, right? And since it's got easier for that, it's also made it easier to fuck it up. Yeah. Um, mm. And another thing as well, when when I've played vinyl at a handful of gigs, because obviously I say I caught the back end of the vinyl mm. era, um, probably even past the vinyl era, I was just doing it for like vinyl only nights yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Um, turn up, right? Playing your set and see if you're staying for a couple of drinks or, or, or socialising. Like, just making sure your box is okay. It's not something you can just easily just... Aye, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's there. Aye, you can't just you don't want to go missing. Pocket, yeah, you can't yeah. just put it in your pocket and just have a crack with people. Aye. You've just you've literally got to, like, put it somewhere where you think it's going to be safe. So, yeah, big up the USBs now. Yeah, <laughs> Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, fucking hell. I'll tell you what... Plus, also, you could, you could always get, like, back in the day, you could always get in... You always get your mate in because he was carrying your box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as well as that as well. Uh-huh. But another thing as well was uh, I was getting me to carry my USBs now, like that. <laughs> just, <laughs> just walking. <laughs> nah. uh, another thing as well, which a lot of people don't touch on, but I think it was a really good era, was C- the, C- the CD era. Just when you've played a tune and you're ratcheting through, you think it's not. I know you can look through the menu and that, but when you when you go through and you're like. This could work, and then you pull this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just class. whacking. Yeah, yeah, I miss burning CDs. Uh, <laughs> Although it's a pain in the ass. Do you know something like Elgar would do on that? Right, I can remember being sat like soda was on a Saturday night every night in Fusion. Yeah. Well, originally it was on a Friday night, but that's another story from another tale. Big shout out to Felix Lighter for that. And uh, I can remember like starting at fucking. Be, I'd be on at ten o'clock when it opened, and like in the back room opened, and I'd be there at fucking nine forty eight upstairs in the Royal Oak where we lived. Fucking burning like four more tunes on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ended up never playing the guns. <laughs> it's a, it's a pain, it was a pain burning CDs, but having them just there in front of you where it's all readily mm. available. And I mean, if you see my CD wallet, you'll know what I mean. But I'm really organised. That was 
Oh, man. Like, record box. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Record box is like, everyone can be organised. I don't use it. I, can't, I don't have the time. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to CDs, I was just like, everything was just perfect. What do you think mine was like? Oh, ter- I don't <laughs> I, I imagine you, know, you didn't put the CDs back in the holders, oh, did you? Well, yeah, sometimes. But he's under that bit of the front because it was, it was always a case logic case, wasn't it? Because mm. it was by far the best fucking CD wallet to well, the, right? the little net. Yeah, yeah the little the, 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 um, at the front it was a little net, but there was also the bit that had like you could just put eight in at the front. Yeah, plus so there'd always be like two or three deep in them. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that it would be like that. No, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I bet if you if you will have a look at my CD, well, I've still got it. I've got the hard house one, and um, the hard house one was only a little one, though. Yeah, but my, my house, my funk, my week in week out funky house one was uh, was a great big one with like you know you can see eight at a time. Oh, yeah. mate. I didn't, I, I didn't love that eye, eh? It was a good era, and I think it goes un- unnoticed as mm-hmm. well. Because uh, the thing is, though, like when, when people started mixing on CDs, they were like, fucking hell, man, mixing on CDs, it's all lost, really. you know what I mean? <laughs> fucking vinyl and all that, and all these people twining about it. Eh? The good thing for me, right, I think, is, because I produce music as well, I don't need to sit there and go on, like an acetate pressed up or out like that for... Oh, I've just finished this tune, I want to play it tonight. Rush round and get something pressed up. Like, you could just burn it onto a CD and there you go, mm-hmm. test it with you. I've seen a, somebody talking about it, I'm not sure, I think it might have been Ian Redman from Ultrabeat talking about it, saying when they didn't have a press for Pretty Green Eyes, right? I don't, I can't remember where I've heard this. Could be on another podcast. I think, no, it wasn't, it was on In Demand. Uh, In Demand Radio, it was. It was um, uh, Trip Down Memory Lane with Rob Kane and. Ian Redmond and they sit there and talk about the, the best records basically can you remember when you said to me Oi, when you do the podcast you should, what you should do is when you're talking about a certain tune just put it on the background and stuff like that mm. they were doing that as they were doing it oh, but nice. we can't do this because of YouTube's shit well not YouTube's really good <laughs> <laughs> don't think that has me but YouTube YouTube with regards to playing music it, it always flags it up and mutes bits I tried that on episode one it didn't work um, anyways and they're, and they're talking about it and he says when they did Pretty Green Eyes, they couldn't go and get a, an acetate pressed up, so they wanted to go and test it and play it out in a club. Take the CDJ100 with them, burn up a CD, at the time it was vinyl, so plug mm-hmm. that in, and I think that was a lot of, like, the first, oh. the first, I think that for a producer, it's, it's cheap Oh, absolutely, yeah, it's got, to, it's got to be, it's got to be better, hasn't it? Yeah, Ooh. so, yeah, so I said your pet peeve, but, like, what what's what's the opposite then? What's when, what what's one thing you love about the music industry? That like that I am uh, uh, that I'm lucky enough to maybe even I'm only twice a year this year to just to rock up and play the music that I like to make people dance. Is that the best yeah, part? Of it? Yeah, honestly, yeah. I mean, because DJ when I first started DJ when I was like what, I think it was Steve Cap. We had this crack now last time. It was Steve Cap yeah. fucking pro one fifties right on a title playing Italian house. I never ever thought for me thought that I'd still be doing it. Like uh, what, thirty years later? What, was it just for the drink? Like just for, I just thought it was a laugh and it was fun and that and like I never ever thought I'd be playing gigs or out like that. So. For me, and maybe this will help with the motivation of it, it's it's just nice. It's good it's good to know you get to do these things on. Question for you then. You've just you've just said something there that's got me ticking. Right. When you when you were DJ, are you solely playing for yourself? No, 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 am I hell? No. If I'm playing for yourself, you you like Yeah, I play I play but you because if you can't write So used to rock around with some lads um, when we were DJing for Stangen and stuff like that and still see sometimes people will practice a set bring a set and play that set regardless of what's going on on the floor and that doesn't work for me it doesn't because like you know it's like we, we spoke about this thing the last time as well the, the If All Else Fails bit on uh, on Seb Fontaine on a Saturday night where you bring up DJs and say what's that track you've got in the back of your box for when the dance floor's fading you know when you're whacking on it's just going to go fucking well so you have to be able to read a room and see people because if you've just fucking practiced 12 tunes took them with you and that's all you've got in your box like going yeah. back in the name of the records let's say the DJ plays it before you that's, that's yeah. you straight and you're not I don't think that's proper DJing then it's not because you're dictating to the crowd what you want to play really yeah and uh, I suppose if you're a big famous fucking DJ like you can go and do that but I would imagine that part and for me it is part of the skill and part of the the, the love of these kind of things is reading the room and looking, you know, bringing people's asses up on, on the floor and that, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I, I feel you've got to be able to read that room because that is, anyone can beat match, especially now anyone can beat match. Let's not get into, well, uh, everyone's a DJ, they put some of these in front of them because those people can just fuck off <laughs> all ears. Just fuck off. Oh, look at this point with both cameras as well. Nah, I forgot there was two of them there. Yeah. All these can fuck off, right? Um, all right, Frank, I'll look at it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what you're playing on, as long as you can do it. But the point, that's my point I'm making is, Anyone can beat match now, especially digitally, because um, it does it for you. 
but he's reading the room and knowing what to play next and knowing what's going to go into that and then what's going to keep these people on the floor on the same level that they're on now that for me is the biggest thrill out of it right I've got another little side story that you, you, you've said off this um, so uh, there's, there is we've got die hard fans who watch this every mm -hmm. week and as soon as it's on jump in the inbox and say class or shit mm -hmm. but, no, no, they won't say shit because they're, they're, they're nice people. I, I, I really liked it, but <laughs> no, I'm not sure if that it's it's good, but it's not as good as usual. Mm, right. that, that, that type of people, big shout them as well because they're the ones that are motivating. When I when I wake up on a on a Friday, put it out mm -hmm. on the Patreon, and people are there straight away, and they're just like, "That's got to be that's got to be good." That like yeah. that, that that put you on right. Like. Yeah, it gives me it's motivational, and they're the ones mainly I'm making it for. Like the ones who there's the ones who dip in and out who mm -hmm. watch one episode but won't watch the next there's ones who watch it every week and they're fucking top for doing it I appreciate it but uh, I met one of these people because mm -hmm. a lot of them I genuinely don't know like they always say your biggest fan is the, the one who doesn't know you like your, 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 your biggest hater is one of your closest people that's what I'm saying that's yeah, what I'm saying true. Yeah, true enough right? so this, this guy came up to me I was at um, Madison's uh, versus Anth I think it's called Anthem Nation um, at electric soup about two months ago Ooh. and this guy came up to me probably 50 years old I'd never met the guy in my life come up to me and he goes you're you're mr youtube guy aren't you <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, what, what, yeah, yeah. Well, sorry. Hey. he goes i'm only joking brad he goes i watch every every uh, episode that you do i love it and then he then proceeded to quote to me something i'd said on a previous episode and he i thought he lost me totally because like he, he quoted it and i was like <laughs> like, you know, I was like, like, because obviously when you've got no context and someone mm -hmm. just says this to you, so this guy come up to me, never, never met this guy in my life, and he's such a nice guy as well. That nice, I forgot his name. Um, <laughs> no, no, you know what I mean. But yeah, like, I um, he, he's a Patreon, and I apologise. I put in the comments his name um, off the top of my head, it's just because I'm trying to get to keep this story in my head at the same time. And he said to me, he said, uh, he quoted this. He goes. Um, he said, everyone can anthem bash, but when you play them a tune that they didn't know what they wanted to hear, is the best feeling ever. That's right? he quoted that to me. brilliant. Right? And I said that on Cy Kennedy's yep. episode, and I basically said, I've got friends who go out and DJ, and they'll play, right, obviously you're not in massively in touch with the bounce stuff, but when I said this, they'll play See the Light, they'll play Pretty Green Eyes, they'll play, they'll play that, that rhythm of the night, all mm -hmm. the big anthems mm -hmm. that you know that the birds love and the mm -hmm. lads will follow. Right, but I said to him, and I'm sorry, as I say, I've repeated this on an episode, but when you were saying there, this is, this is, I think you've got a similar sort of ethos, is you play music, maybe an underground banger, in which you, people might not have heard before, but you know for a fact that they want to hear that. Yeah, yeah, that's, it, that's, that's, that's I mean? the bit, that's what I mean. To me, that, that's what a good DJ yeah. is. It separates a, 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 a good DJ from a great DJ. Yeah. Right. And I'm not saying I'm great, by the way, by any stretch. You are great, though. But no, I'm not. You I, are, mate. Don't let you listen. listen. You are my guy. When I see you doing well, it, it spurs me on. Like, no. it really does, mate. But and you are doing well. I'm, I'm doing all right. I am. I'm doing. I'm doing. It's, it, it's going well. And there's another point I'll get into in a minute. That's going to go <laughs> hand in hand with this. Uh, and basically, it, it's like, for me, when you when you DJing, it's like I'll pull out something that's 20 years old if I'm playing a set of like stuff that's new, and someone will go, Fuck yeah, what's that? And I'll be like, This is 20 years old, this isn't even nah, new, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, This is fuck, this is a banger in it, and it's probably mm. a B side no one's heard of, uh, yeah. but do you know when you just know something's gonna work? Yeah, and to me, there's a, there's a lot of them tunes out there that um, are just sitting there getting wasted in history because. They've either been forgotten about, or they never got the the big exposure because the air side was bigger back in yeah. the day, or whatever. And the amount of times when you see this and you're like, go right when you if you're a vinyl collector, just go and get get your favorite records. This is this is how I discovered this. <coughs> I can't remember who told me right. Go and get your favorite records. Get twelve of them. Just have a session on the decks. Don't play the side. Use the player. Play the flip side. Yeah. Put it in. Right, and you'll discover you've got loads of new tunes. Because, <laughs> right. Honestly, you've got loads of really class tunes as well. There's, eh? a, there's a tune called um, John. Uh, I 
fuck me off the top of my head, I don't want to sound stupid if this is wrong. I think it was John John B. Norman, I think it was, the experience. Mm -hmm. Trance slash hard trance, early mm -hmm. scout stuff. Never heard anyone play it. I played it on warm up um, at a gig a while back. And I had two DJs come over going, fucking hell. I've never heard tunes like this before. This is one of yours. I was like, mate, this is fucking, this is quite a 98. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I was like, uh, and it's just for me, I love finding tunes where, you know, for a fact, it's just going to turn heads a little bit. And I think that's yeah. for me. Um, but yeah. I, I like that. I like, yeah, I like that a lot. And you think to yourself, like, because especially like now, it's very, very easy um, to, for everyone to have tunes because you can copy them and, and MP3 them and things like that, right? Yeah. But like, even then, just, coming across something that you think this is really obscure and I've had it forever and probably I don't know if you can still buy it now on MP3 or not but I've got it and you're thinking yeah that's yeah. it I'm fucking loving that there's a couple of things now I'll, I'll give one of my secrets away um, when it comes to DJ um, a lot of my hidden gems mm -hmm. right are from a certain era and it's when it stopped getting pressed on vinyl and they got put onto CD singles but they were just B-sides and they never mm -hmm. got re-released and that's where I find most of my my gems um so I, I buy them off Discogs. Some of them are quite pricey as well. Some CD singles still sell for 30, 40 quid. Mm -hmm. But if it's a good enough tune, get it's it. A, it's a maxi CD as well, isn't it? It's got the six or seven mixes on yeah. it, hasn't it? Yeah. Nobody's, nobody <laughs> else has got the, that version. So mm -hmm. I'm just like, I can play this. I can yeah. play this and play this. Right. And it's gone as far as now. I played a thing. I think I can't remember what I called the mix. It was just something daft. Just something I put online. I think it was like a little bouncy one. And on one of the mixes, I drop, I drop a kick drum in from the next track coming in. Next minute, I hear this DJ playing it, and they've ripped my mix, took that part of it, and extended it either end. And I was just like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Really? I'll tell you he's off pod as well, because oh, I know you know well. him. So that's oh, wow, thing. that's even better then. Yeah. I know who it is. Do you? Yeah. You'll probably guess. <laughs> yeah, I reckon I know who it is. Like. Right, well, anyways. <laughs> uh, and it's not even my tune, so I can't be pissed off about it. So, mm -hmm. what they've done is, and basically like 16 beats before I was going to mix it I drop in like I drop in the kick drum for the next tune for two and I thought oh maybe it's just the way he's mixed it I listen back to it and I'm like no it's the exact same kick drum from the next tune that, what's that the he's odds? not playing yeah, 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 yeah it's not there now so, <laughs> so that's I mean I paid £20 for that, that CD to get that B-side oh, single okay, you cheeky no. little bastard <laughs> 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 no that's a, that's a good one um, but yeah do you, think, do you think they know who they are when we're talking about them right now I know they watch it. Ah, so they know who they are and they know what tune it is and you know what they're talking about because you know you did it! Ah, <laughs> uh, you bastard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the thing is, uh, the person who is, uh, they've never, I don't want to sound bad, but they just do their own thing. They don't bother anyone. So uh, that's why I'm not bothered. If it was somebody with a big name and they're like, they've just done that and I'd be like, I'd be like, fuck you. <laughs> Stay in my limelight. That's it though. Like, but look yeah. at that again, like you've inspired someone. To not only like to not only really want to play that tune that you've discovered, which is again is a good thing. Yeah. If you can inspire them and think, well, I want to play that because it's dead or good, you can't get keep stuff like that. But you've inspired them to not only do that, but to whip it off your mix yeah. and extend it either, and so they can play it themselves. Yeah. Because they can't get it, so that's got to be a good feeling and all, mate. Um. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, that's got to be a good bit of energy that you're putting out into the world, man, mate. I'll, I do try and look for tunes uh, everyone else doesn't play. Anyways, with Robert it on, I want to get into um, some questions if that's okay. Oh, go on then. Um, before we we've been rabbiting on for a while haven't we yeah, I'll be alright oh cheeky hour there <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um, so we've got a couple of questions nice one to those reaching out um, with questions as well you can uh, ask questions um, um, on Instagram at it's time to refresh just send over it could be anything at all and when I say anything listen to some of these <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean I, do you know something right. I, I purposely um, they're not even that bad but yeah I didn't ask you when you came home what did you have for tea last night fuck uh, oh uh, so I had uh, marinated some chicken thighs I deboned and skinned some chicken thighs and I stripped all the tendons and off them because chicken thighs is by the way if you like chicken breast then something wrong with you it's the worst bit of meat on the chicken I like chicken breast by the way uh, but chicken thighs are better so anyways, anyways, so I cut them into medallions, uh, I marinated them for a little while in some spices, I fried off some onions and some garlic and some chilies and I took some chilies off my wee chilli plant, the kizzy bought me it's on the window ledge, <laughs> I've never ever ever just picked food off of a thing and chopped it and cooked it there and then, it was the weirdest feeling in the world, uh. um, and uh, it was mostly like salt, it was kind of like salt and pepper chicken -y. 
thing with noodles. Jamie Oliver, eat your heart off. <laughs> no, I was also I was also like fucking five cans of two whiskeys in by this point. Okay, right? okay, I was okay. proper on the ball, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, class, class. I love, I love the fact of um, people coming here and they're so passionate about food. That does it for me. Mate, hey, mate. We've discussed many, many times the possibilities that we could utilise this studio for oh, yeah. food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've got um, a couple of Patreon bits coming up that I think you'll like. We are going to do them, by the way. <coughs> I'm saying, right, we it's are. It's just in. been getting this finished that's been the problem. Well, I was going to try and just get the one half finished and then just we would record some of the ideas. <laughs> this is, It'll be special, put it that way. <laughs> uh, so these are questions. Um, games from your childhood. Um... Right, someone put this on Instagram and replied to the questions thing. Um, I'm not sure what your question is, but it got me intrigued. It, it just says, I put, uh, watch your games from your childhood, and they put PS1, Spider-Man, uh, GTA, which was the best verse. So I mean, I think they put many put version and they've run out of text. Um, big shout, whoever that is, because I haven't written it down, but... Ooh, yeah. So like what, computer games or just game games? Computer because, games, go, go oh, on. Well, because, so the other week, I was at work, and uh, the girls were off. Kizzy had the lassies, um, her daughter and mine, yeah. Jamie and Esme, and um, so we've got a, we've got a little we've got a little family WhatsApp group. And I put in the WhatsApp group because I was at work. I was out in the van. I was like, right, you got thirty pound, and you're going buy some games to play tonight. Ball games. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they came oh. on, mate. And they came on with Game of Life. Fucking brilliant game. Game, game. Absolutely but fucking brilliant. Game of Life's the one with the families, isn't and it? And a fucking spinny wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's class game. I play that back in the day. We, there's a version of my mum's like the original version, and it's got like it's like a topographical map. There's wee plastic bits that you stick yeah, in yeah, the board yeah. now, but this one doesn't. It's just all flat now. But hey, board games have gone shit when they do digital. Who uses digital money on Monopoly? That's another show. What? Yeah, no, terrible, Ooh. terrible. She got me to try and play it. How are you supposed mm. to steal if it's digital money? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Just type it in on the thing. Fuck, no. How are you supposed to steal if it's yeah. digital? But Game of Life, original Game of Life with yeah. all the humps, that's yeah, the one yeah, I yeah. remember. And you have like little cars and they've got like family, mm. you can have a mecha family. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so now, because we're super fucking woke, um, doesn't matter what colour you are. Okay. You don't have to get married and you can choose to have a child or not. It's your call. Oh, I'm but, not uh, a but, fan. What was it fun? It was fucking brilliant, mate. Right, that and um, Uno. Uno's fucking... Underrated as fuck. Mate, 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 spectacular game. <laughs> but we've got Uno Flip. So there's, I don't there's know two, So it's just normal Uno, like. But there's another side of the card. So there's one side. And then you can see the other side when everyone's holding them up and that. Mm. And then if you put place a flip card down, you've got to turn your hand over, turn the deck over. Turn the bottom card over. Oh, I like that. What a twist. All right. I mean, it's seven quid, you know what I mean? Class. And, and the thing is, right, and this is the thing that a lot of people don't realise about, about kids and stuff like that, right? Kids don't need your fucking money. Yeah. You know? Like, you could buy your kid everything in the world that it wanted and you would have a very unhappy child if you don't spend fucking time with them. Time. Time's a big thing, mm. yeah. Like, yeah. I've, I've, I, like, I've only got the one that's, well, that's mine. And Jay's got, like, two brothers when she lives with her mum. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, I just, I, I'm, I try to make sure that whenever she's with me, that it's, a large portion of, if not all of my time, devoted to just being me and her. But she's got a phone now and she's nine. Fuck me, it's hard to get her off of it, like. Yeah, kids, just kids. <laughs> right. right, I'm going to mention this one. I actually talking about games and everything like that. <clears throat> right, my little lad's only four. So, he missed the Pokemon Go boom. Mm-hmm. Can you remember that? Mm-hmm. Right. Well, he's downloaded Pokemon Go, right? Mm-hmm. And now he's got every single member of my family playing Pokemon Go, right? And in the morning, the messages, messages send, send me Stardust or whatever it is, I don't, really, I don't play it, so I refuse to sign up for it. Because I know for a fact, I've got an addictive personality, so I'm playing it all the time. And he's going around, he's showing me all these shinies he's got, he's got me going to gyms, it's, apparently you need to travel to them, but yeah. He's got Couldn't me... Couldn't have and run over in that, uh, fucking leg. <laughs> honestly, right? Well, anyways, I mentioned it to a couple of lads at work, and they're all playing it now, so wherever oh. I go, I go to work, they're sitting there playing it, fucking, I, I don't know how it works. That's my so. phone. <laughs> right, and then I come home, my missus is playing it with him, and go and see my mum and that, they're playing it, go and see her mum and that, their mm. family's playing it. You just can't get... My best mate to play it, go around theirs, and they're sitting there talking a foreign language, because I don't understand what they're talking I, about. I, I, um... My little lad getting everyone back on the Pokemon Go. My mate at work, um, Ryan Nixon, big shout out to Nixon, he's just had a little girl. Uh, well, he didn't. 
all he did was jizz in his missus she had the baby <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. but it was, just a, it was yesterday or the day before I mean because we got talking about Pokemon right because I've got a Charamander hoodie and then uh, <laughs> I wore the Pokemon t-shirts and that and like I've never played Pokemon like cards never I couldn't even tell you Nixon's got a shitload of them when he was a kid and I'd like do you know how to play he went no it's like what the fuck are you doing with him then so it's like as soon as this baby's born and we're going out to wet the head mate go out to the pub we're taking a fucking deck of them with us mate and we'll just figure out how to play it and play it in the pub so if you ever see two lads out in whatever and one of them looks like me playing Pokemon come and teach us how to do it fuck <laughs> it <laughs> <man. laughs> but I, 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 I just I like stuff like that I'm thinking like you know you, you shouldn't it shouldn't matter that I'm 43 and want to learn how to play Pokemon do you know what I mean I've I, I got hand-me-down Pokemons because they went out of fashion when um when I was younger and my, my cousin gave me them and I like looked at pictures and I was fucking I did not have a clue I don't know what to do uh, with that. like yeah I know that like some of them may, like oh I like the, the look of that one I love that one yeah. like a uh, squirtle and mm. that's my knowledge oh Pikachu and that's that's no, it like you know who's favourite Pokemon then I don't, I don't know them two. <laughs> oh Blastoise no yeah. no well see mine I think it's got to be it's not Pikachu right it's maybe Charizard or Charamander when it's bigger, or is it Charamander when it's little? Hey, remember. well, there's another thing. My, my little lad's own, it's, it's, it's his first, what I'd say, fascination, right? And he's, he knows, he's, he's like me, like I, what I'm like with music, and he's there going, right, there was the only, I didn't know this, this might be wrong, mm -hmm. but I'm just telling you that these are the facts that he's told me. So there was only original on the first time, 150 Pokemons, is that right? Gen 1, eh? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying. Right, and then there's there's more now. But so his favourites are from the Gen One. Um, I have no idea what that means, but there you go. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Whatever yeah. that means. I, I see. I am. Um, I have an incredibly addictive personality, but then again, I also have the fucking shortest attention span in the world. I've noticed. So I can absolutely hyper focus on anything. Like so, last year start. Sorry, tail end of last year it was archery. Me, I was kind of shooting with Dave Stockton when I was unemployed every morning for like fucking ages, eh? Random I haven't boat, lifted. Yeah. I haven't lifted a boat since I started his new job because I started six. I can't go in the morning anymore. We were going at like seven in the morning before I started work at nine. And my other job, and, and now I, now I don't. I haven't. No, I bought, I spent fucking seventy quid on a fucking bow. And, uh, no, uh, sorry, I tell her like eighty quid on a bow for me and a bow for Jay. Cheers is still in the fucking house. It hasn't even been opened. <laughs> and I'm thinking, is it really a good idea? You're saying that about to... like focus and that. I, as you can, pro as listeners probably know, my head goes around and around. I've got constantly bashing questions out and I've only just noticed this and I feel kind of embarrassed but there's a fucking ball sack right there <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a ball sack did it I was just I tilted my head down I had like, like double tape on it and I was, oh do you know what, and, and yes. you were talking to me there and all I could think about was the ball sack oh, man. I'm going to have to do something with that we'll make it into a, a penis or something but yeah um, I was listening to your conversation but do you know you say your, your attention yeah I didn't lose my attention I'm, I'm just thinking about bollocks now <laughs> So it's back to the norm. <laughs> but yeah, so we'll sort of get on to the next question because mm -hmm. I've totally lost my train of thought after mm -hmm. looking at that set of balls. Um, that someone's got a comment on that now saying, ball sack. <laughs> Probably for every single uh, episode next coming up. Um, sorry, so back to the original question mm -hmm. then. What was your, your favourite um, childhood game? I would say Game of Life, like for board games, but for no, computer, computer games. games. Oh. What, was your, what was your computer growing up? Uh, in 1985... My dad came home, or like it was eight, no, eighty six, and I came home with an Amstrad CPC four six four. Never been on it, but I've still got it. I mean, man's right, fucking cassettes. Weird, oh. weird that like just that noise and the reading of that fucking head and the yeah. could load this game on. So um, it was a game on that called Bruce Lee, right? Oh, and you were just the skinny little yellow Bruce Lee man with black pants on, you know, like yeah. the the yellow top and black pants thing, and he was, and then it was a big fat green sumo wrestler and a yeah. little black ninja. And it was just a platform scroller, like right, just you okay. know, you, you worked on one page and then the other. That was my favourite game on there. Big nostalgia. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But then when I got a Mega Drive, mm -hmm. which was like my first 480 games consoles, oh mate, it would have to be, it would have to be Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, like the first one, man. Oh, it was unreal. And like there was the two cheats as well. It was like the. Uh, I had I had one of them, but it, just because it was old, it wasn't it wasn't of my time. Yeah, I yeah. missed it. I got it when when everyone started buying. Was it the 64 or the Super Nintendo? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, so I got that as like a hand me down and um Have you still got it? Uh no, I don't, that's long gone. Uh I've I moved house. Old man at David Mullins. Uh, <laughs> Wish I hadn't though. <laughs> um but my my first console was the sixty four. Mm. Um So that's what I was gonna say before. I've downloaded um 
Again, Ryan Nixon, big shout to Ryan. Although I like to call him Brian Dixon. Brian Dixon! <laughs> if he was going to be, um, <laughs> he's, Nixon's a great guy. He's, he's a lovely fella. He's a skinny weak fella, curly hair and a beard. He works in our uh, works in our packing department, right? Yeah. And if he was going to be a, uh, uh, in a fight or in some sort of wrestling match, I would have to be the person who announces him. Okay. It's your favorite. Well, it's your favorite bog brush and mine. Boy, Nixon! <laughs> and I'll just shout it across the factory, and he'll just be fucking loving. He calls me Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> but I downloaded an emulator on my phone. So what does that do? Oh, an emulator basically is just it's just a program, so you can download ROMs of, of fucking Game Boy games and Mega Drive games and stuff like that. Play them on your phone. It's very weird to play it touch screeny with no kind of feedback on the buttons, but you can download it. So I've started playing Pokemon. Uh, was it Pokemon Pikachu edition or something like that on Game Boy Advance? Oh, right, I see, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. right, right. There's, a, there's a couple of like, cross platform things that do that now. Uh, for the 64, GoldenEye, oh, did you ever play oh, that? Oh, mate, that was mate, one. all day long, right? I have vivid and fucking amazing memories of. It was the first console that had four controllers as well without having to buy anything to stick them in. Yeah. Just being, and like, and Nintendo were fucking great at making like four player, properly good four player games. GoldenEye was one of the best. Yeah, that caused that caused a lot of fights that in, in my household. Oh, he's like, being stoned as fuck. Sorry, man. <laughs> I was like Fifteen, sixteen, playing four player Goldeneye. Eh? Four yeah. player Goldeneye and Golden Guns was a fucking one. Like I played uh, my my earliest memories. This is how I got into wrestling as well. It was it was Goldeneye and I played. I think it was was it No Mercy ninety nine or oh, it was like wow. it was like a wrestling game. It was yeah, so yeah. bad, but looking back on it, it was so much fun. And Mario Kart 64 as well. Class, oh, class, class. Uh, okay. uh, 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 the battle uh, instead of the races, the battle games. You know, you just you shoot around a level, and you've got you just fighting to see you can. Uh, you've got yeah, all the yeah. I know you're about. Yeah, uh, what is that called? Was it, just, I think it was versus battles. Just battle, just battle mode or something. Yeah, like yeah, it's yeah, called, yeah. Right? Um, You can still do it. Me and Jay play it on the Switch. Like, and oh, she got a Switch for Christmas one year, a couple of years ago. Yeah. And uh, do you know what, man? I don't know why, but like it's like, and I've watched a lot of documentaries about, about a lot lately about like, there's one called High Score. Right. There's another one called Coin Up and stuff like that, talking about games consoles and the history of games. And uh, Nintendo just do it differently. Like, it's, a dip, it's yeah. like they're not asked, they're not competing, they don't want to be Xbox, they don't want to be PlayStation. They just do their own thing. They do their own thing. And like, they, 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 they sometimes will get a bit off kilter. Like, there was things like the, the Virtual Boy. Did you ever yeah. see that in the 80s? It was a red thing. You yeah. sat on your hand, like, you, know, like, you put your eyes into it. And then things like, um, like the Wii U, that wasn't a great hit either. Yeah. But that moved it to the Switch, didn't it? Because it moved it from. Because uh, the Wii U, you could play on your telly, yeah. but you could also play it on the remote. Right. Because the remote had a screen in it. And then obviously that made it to the Switch, which you can play either as a handheld or plug-in. There's a few hit and misses, but yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was the true alternative, I yeah, think. Yeah, it's fucking right, though. And like, oh, they're, just, they're just class games, man. Do you know what the Nintendo business where it started out as? Uh, it was a playing card game. Uh, a company who made um, playing cards because you weren't allowed to gamble in Japan so they made these games like a game of chance kind of playing cards I believe in like 1921 or something and where something. was it at do you know oh um, uh, I'll save you the hassle it was in a brothel yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you wanted to like I thought you were going to tell me which town it was in but oh, no I didn't, I didn't know it was in a brothel yeah I was like mm -hmm. uh, what, what a long way to came <laughs> uh, really yeah from like, them activities uh -huh. right uh, well, so then. second part of this question is mm -hmm. what's your favourite version of GTA what was your favourite GTA oh um, what was the one that came out on the PlayStation 2 um, what was it called it San, and, uh, San Andreas that was yeah. the last one San so Andreas. it was Vice City and no San Andreas Sam. San Andreas was unbelievably good because it was next generation you could like swim you could fucking it yeah, was, yeah, it was yeah. just like yeah, yeah. Yeah, that there was one, so yeah. much extra you could do oh, but saying that like, Vice City I've the original it, like when you were looking down on top of it like what was that on uh, London was that, was that I know the original well no the original just Grand Theft Auto when you were looking down it wasn't a first yeah. person or you were looking behind them you were just looking PlayStation down PlayStation 1 I believe maybe and that was alright because it was just crazy yeah, you, didn't you didn't know what you were doing you could just go around and kill folk and run folk over and that but yeah definitely San Andreas I remember when Grand Theft Auto 3 came out and it was like proper e evolution because it was like it was a 3D guy yeah, yeah. in this world it's like wow look at the mm. detail on this car yeah it's it's watch me kill this hooker <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Once we drag this guy out of, his, out of the car and stamp on his head. <laughs> <laughs> um, my question for uh, no, sorry. We'll, what we'll do now is we'll do throwback attack. Mm -hmm. Did we do throwback attack when I did last? Did it with mm, you? I don't know. Did we? Probably. I can't remember. So, <laughs> it, uh, so uh, you've just got to answer this as quick as you can. Yep. The first thing that comes to your head. Throwback attack is uh, throwback attack with Big Al. Let's do this. Um, what song do you think of when you think back to primary school? Wheels on a bus go round and round. 
Really? <laughs> wow. Let's do this. Uh, what song do you think back when you think back to secondary school? Uh, oh, uh, Wonderwall Oasis. Oh, yes. Plus, uh, what song do you think of when you think of getting your first set of decks? Me first what? Set of decks. Oh, um, oh, uh, Trials of Enthusiast, Sweet Release, Trials of Enthusiast, Full On Mix, Red Label, right. on Delirious. Check it out. Class. Belt of Chill. Um, yeah. Was that one of your first records as well, was it by any chance? No. Okay. Um, what song do you think of when you think back to your first days of growing out? Hmm. Come on, I think quick off the mark. Oh, fuck no, um, uh, I don't know. Um, I, I, I would say Fallen Angel, Paul Van Dyke. Class, class, class. And what song do you think of when you think back to your golden era? Oh, uh, Peyton Higher Place, Eric Cooper's, Eric Cooper's gospel vocal remix. Released on Head Candy, by Head Candy, for Head Candy. I don't know the tune, track, hey. but yeah, we'll go with that. that. Too high. No, that's another one. <laughs> <laughs> Last one, what is your karaoke song? Oh, that's life, Frank Sinatra, all day long. All day. Uh, oh, that's oh, life. Yeah. And you can sing as well. That's what all the people say. <laughs> yeah, we got on this one last time. He, he established that he could actually sing. Um, mm. He had, I, he had singing lessons. Uh, yeah, huh? it was uh, um, all Dan Hanley like. Right, and what we're going to do is we're going to sort of tie it up today. What we're going to mm. do. You, well, you obviously done your last meal last time you came, mm -hmm. didn't you? So we're going to do Flopper Bop because Flopper Bop's kind of a new feature mm -hmm. that we've, we've, we've brought in. So this is Flop of Bop with Big Al and uh, Beautiful South, Perfect 10, Flop of Bop. Flop. Oof. It's a bop for me, I think I love it. <laughs> it's alright. It's overplayed, isn't it? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, it's yeah go on, really go on. on. Um, Room 5, not of a cheat and make love. Oh, bop all day long, like. Absolutely. Love reminds me of living in Newcastle and he's still like a bath 38. <laughs> it is a good tune, uh, absolute class tune. Shapeshifters, loads for him. Oh, mate, absolutely bop all day long. Vocal or club mix. And also, uh, do you know when you play some tunes that go so well together you never want to play them any other way? Mm. Daji in full intention. Now, we had the fucking joy and pleasure of being able to uh, interview Lado from whose name I've forgotten now, uh, from full intention. <laughs> uh, anyway, but, uh, that, uh, Daddy, full intention, what do you want from me? Right, and then Lola's, <laughs> Lola's thing into that. Oh, it, it just, oh, it gives me goosebumps thinking about it. You have to send me a mix if you oh, will do, I will do, I will do. Um, oh, right, I'll, I don't know if you know this one, but you uh, might do, because obviously you're a bit uh, of a hard uh, outset. Uh, Beat Busters, uh, Omo Komova. Don't know, I'd say Bob. <laughs> it's more but it's it's a bouncy hard house tune. I would say I would it say was it's from early two thousands. I probably heard it then. Yeah. Uh, I'll show you when we get off of you. Mm. If you're gonna say it's a bop by the way. <laughs> uh, and last one for today, Paul Johnson, get down. This be, a, yeah, be, yeah, this is a polarizing tune because it is mighty, such it? a fucking good tune. It's also in the Guinness Book of World Records, I believe, for being the most repetitive song, or it was at the time, uh, the yeah. most repetitive song, because it says something like Get Get Down, something like fucking 586 times or something. I love that tune, it doesn't get yeah. boring. No, no, it's, no. It's, it's amazing that it's bop, so repetitive. Bop it's a bop from me. It's amazing that it's so repetitive, and yet it doesn't. A hook from it's just unreal. Even without the vocal, that tune would still fucking rock. Yeah. Just did the hook on dun 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 and then the piano that goes to the top. Bling, 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 bling. Yeah, Unreal, mate. Look at that. <laughs> wow. Class tune, class tune. And with that being said, we're going to tie up today. Mm -hmm. um, I would, as I say, I'll do your last meal, but you've already done it. But uh, yeah, I just want to say thanks to everyone who's watched. Um, Thank you very much for having me, mate. It, uh, have you enjoyed it? Oh, always, mate. Always. always. Yeah. Took long enough to get us on, and I was thinking, myself, I can't wait. I can't back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you will be back, um, and we'll get the plans under mm -hmm. we'll get a Patreon exclusive mm -hmm. um, you'll be seeing more of Al because obviously he's a he's a character and, and I love having him on um, <laughs> and, mate, appreciate and he's, that, he's, right? you've got some you, you're going to be involved in some of the Patreon stuff mm -hmm. um, and we're going to be doing what I said to you off pod as well that's yes. going to be another thing it's cryptic be, as out eh? it's cryptic <laughs> well, I, 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 like I said there's all these podcasts popping up and I don't want people to steal the ID before I do it so I like that, your style my brother that, I like that's, your that's style. what it is um, yeah, so I just want to say thanks to everyone for tuned in. And if you've made it this far in, because we've just talked shit the <laughs> last, last hour and a bit, um, thank you. Uh, if thank you enjoyed you it, much. share it with your mates because it, it massively helps the podcast, gets new ears on the podcast. The, the amount of people who reach out and say, Oh, my friend shared this, and that's how they've discovered it. It's, it's just organic mm -hmm. sharing, um, is unbelievable. So, yeah, if you uh, leave a little comment and 
I'm doing the very stereotypical thing of YouTube here. If mm -hmm. you enjoyed it, stick, hit the thumbs up on the video as well mm -hmm. because it helps the algorithm, apparently. Um, and drop a comment. And if you thought it was shit, let me know in the comments. Yeah, yeah. Or if you want to write the word ball sack, write the word ball sack. Yeah. Uh, and if, you, if, you, if you have some amazingly amazingly good house music you can want to send to me to inspire me, please, by all means. Yeah, yeah. A few of the producers who watch that, I'm sure we'll reach out to you. <laughs> Excellent, like. <laughs> but yeah, I just want to say thanks for coming on, mate. Uh, thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed it, you can um, you can join up to the Patreon, which helps uh, sort of fund the podcast. I mean, it doesn't really fund it. I, like I have, that. and it's definitely <laughs> worth it. Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. are. You're, you're a Patreon, aren't Good you? Night, um, Put out the boys out, like. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, as I say, you get early access, you get bonus episodes, and there's going to be a lot more bonus episodes now in the studios here as well, where we're going to do a little bit bit of everything there, do you know what I mean? And it'd be worth just to see the carnage of what we've got planned. Oh, um, pain, mate. Yeah, and we get a dig deeper into more music stuff and we dig deeper into stories that can't be publicly put out for whatever reason. If you need, that needs to go behind a pair wall, shall we say. Yes. Um, yes. And that's what we're looking at you there, Mum. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Al's mum, but um, you can't view this. Uh, sorry She'll to watch this as well. I yeah. imagine this when it comes out. So, hiya, Mum. The thing is, my mum watches it, right? Oh, well, she says she watches it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but uh, like... If, she, you're, if you're watching this, Brad's mum, tell us what the answer to this question is. <laughs> seven plus seven plus two divided by eight. <laughs> <laughs> she messages me number. Oh, like, oh, hell. No, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, I, like my mum knows most of my stories. Um, I haven't told them on here, which purposely they get saved for behind the paywall. Mm. I've got I've got a couple <laughs> of uh, embarrassing, to say the least, stories. Um, but yeah, so you can sign up there for as little as three pounds a month. Three pound, right? Is fuck off for what you get. The mm. amount of the amount of like perks you get to it as well is yep. really good. Um, it's so not yeah. even a pint. <laughs> oh yeah it is well, nowadays well, yeah it well, not, no, 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 no. not if you go with a spoon um, <laughs> but yeah um, it's cheaper um, to watch this per month than an, uh, like to fund your alcoholism it. yeah fund your alcoholism <laughs> yeah join the journey of becoming sober right <laughs> <laughs> and sign up on Patreon Excellent. but yeah uh, just want to say thanks for watching and see you again soon